Good morning everyone. Welcome to my channel. It's lovely to have you here. We are in the kitchen as usual on a lovely sunny day. It's beautiful outside. It's not going to be hot. It's going to, it's going to be medium and lovely. So I'm very excited about that for a pleasant day. Um, before I get started, I might just, sorry I'm moving things, but you know how I've my camera always readjusts when it turns itself on so I can get everything right before I start. And then as soon as the camera's on, it's all wonky. So I'm sorry about that. It's settled in its position now. I'm happy where it is. It looks kind of symmetrical and you can see everything. So there we are. Anyway, before I get started, I just thought, because I have new subscribers, I might just introduce myself and let you know just a brief little bit about me. So I don't, I don't want to bore you, but I just thought I'd fill you in. My name is Suzanne, and I live in Sydney, Australia. And so, of course, it's our summer here, um, the opposite to the rest of the world, because, you know, we are at the sort of almost at the bottom of the Southern Hemisphere. So when you guys have got the sun, we don't have it. And when we have the sun, you don't have it. So that's why you're in the, you know sort of the tail end of your winter I guess but I know that a lot of you have had some ferociously cold weather we've had some ferociously hot weather and you probably all know about the, the bushfires that were burning all over Australia like since September it was like unprecedented never happened before like that they were just, it was dreadful but they're basically gone or under control they're certainly gone here in my state of New South Wales um, but in its place came flooding rains and, uh, and people lost their lives and lost their homes and their cars and all that stuff and, you know, didn't have power for a long time. Um, and in that, in that torrential rain that we had, my um, kitchen ceiling started to leak and I made a video about that. Um, Anyway, that's in the process. The roof is in the process of getting fixed. The men were here for a few hours yesterday and apparently they're coming back today to finish off. So I hope they do. It'd be nice to get it all done. Um, it's quite interesting having workmen come and they don't even have to come in the house. It's a bit weird. Like, you know, when the plumber comes, he keeps track of what's happening inside and all the rest of it. But anyway, they've been outside while I was actually asleep because I work um, overnight. For um, I was going to say a company, but it's not a company. It's um, what would you call it? Oh my goodness, I don't know. The word's not coming to me. For an organisation called Lifeline, and it's a 24-hour crisis emergency phone line. So I do that overnight, and then after work I have to sleep. So I was asleep when the roof men were here. I left the gate open for them, and um, they weren't noisy. I was fine. I woke up once and checked, and they hadn't even been yet. And then I went back to sleep, and they had arrived. Um, anyway, what I was saying was I live here in New South Wales, and I'm a big-time doll collector. I, I don't just have reborn dolls, and um, I have hundreds of other dolls in my doll room, hundreds and hundreds of them. They're beautiful. And I've been a collector. I was thinking... It really started before I was 10 because until I was 10 I shared a bedroom with my little brother who's only 13 months younger than I am and he was super messy and I was super neat. So at 10 we got our separate bedrooms because his mess sort of kept creeping into my half so the story goes. I don't specifically remember that but um, that's when my mum thought, hmm, time to, time to give them each a bedroom. Anyway, until then I remember that in that bedroom we shared which later became a music room, um, it had a fireplace, a proper fireplace. We never used it, and I used to, um, you know, ash used to fall from the chimney, I guess, and I used to clean it out all the time, but it's where I kept my doll collection. Um, I don't remember the specific dolls I had in there, but I think there were about five. So I reckon that was the start of my collecting. I think my mother... Um, Let's put in inverted commas, disposed of those dolls. I don't have them anymore, which may have added to why I kept collecting other dolls. Um, so anyway, let's get on with today's video. I hope that introduction wasn't too um, boring or long. So we are looking at Lottie in another. Lottie, I better tell you, is a Marianne sculpt by Natalie Blick. 
And for a, I don't know, for a few weeks I've been doing, showing her just in rompers because rompers are my most favourite things on babies. I love bubble rompers. I love the elastic around the thighs. I just love rompers. I just, every time I see a romper I want to buy it. And I think, well, that's ridiculous. She's got so many already. So I decided I would just show you some rompers for a while. And I'm not sick of them yet. And you guys seem to still be enjoying them. So I'll keep going a bit longer. It's still very hot here. So she's not in any danger of catching a cold um, or the flu. Any version you want to name. Um, but So to, let me tell you about today's romper. It is um, by a brand called Flona, which is very strange. It's P-H-L-O-N-A. And I have no idea about the brand, and I have no, I'm not 100% sure where I got this romper from. But I think it may have been from Zoo Lily a few years ago. I honestly can't remember. Just that because I don't recognise the brand, maybe that is where I got it from. Anyway, it's a size 3 months, or 0 to 3, because that's the size that Lottie is. She's about, I think, 21 inches. I made her, in case you knew, I may, I've made... I've got three reborn dolls, and I've got a little reborn fairy that a friend made for me, but that's it as far as reborns go. So I've made all my three dolls, and um, this is one of them. So let me describe the romper to you before I go on. Um, it is white, but it's got those, you know that, um, what is that, Swiss dot, or that dobby, dobby fabric, and it's got little tiny 3D kind of, mid blue um, they're not circles and they're not anything except like a little dash and in a mid blue and then there's some smocking around the bottom of the bodice um, three buttons at the front to do up a Peter Pan collar and little puff sleeves and elastic around the, around the thighs so that's it um, simple but gorgeous isn't it and I love blue on girls She's wearing matching socks, which the, I love these little socks. They're white and they're, they're fold over ones and there's a little sort of slightly scalloped blue trim around the edge. And they're small enough to fit her. They're just perfect. I came a bit unstuck with the headband. I didn't have the right colour blue, which was so annoying. Like, anyway, I didn't. I started with um, a white headband that had a big navy um, sort of rosette on it and I loved that but it didn't go it was too dark the navy was too dark and then the only other thing I had was this light blue um, organza bow on a stretchy lace um, band I could have gone white but I just decided to stick with this blue even though it's quite wrong anyway and also you can see she's got a dummy in for a change which is very unusual for my Lottie but I thought so that I could talk to you I'd just keep her quiet um, and that's it, and she's in her um, silver cross, this is a doll's pram, but you know, silver cross, the, this kind of heritage style, the prams are big, the bodies are big, they're wide, um, and so it just, it looks brilliant. I love, I love my prams. This is a new one, it's not, not old. Uh, I've only had it for maybe two years or something like that. Anyway, so that's Lottie and her romper. I have to tell you what happened to me on Tuesday night when I was getting ready to go to work. Everything was normal, fine, and it was quarter to eleven and I was ready to go but it was too early. I, I don't start till midnight and it takes me twelve minutes to get to work so I really didn't need to leave yet. I usually leave between about five past eleven and ten past eleven, somewhere around there, unless something goes drastically wrong and I leave a bit later. but. I've never been late for work, of course. Like, you know, I'm not late for things, especially not work. You know, I love going, and uh, I've got a lot of friends there, so it's, you know, we have a great time, which is sort of counterintuitive, I realise. But I know that people who do frontline kind of jobs are always very close to their colleagues, because you share a lot of things that other people, you know, that you can't share with other people. So it does make you closer. Anyway, I love my job, and I'm not late late going. So anyway, it was only quarter to 11 and I was just finishing off an email and then all of a sudden um, terrible thunder started and it came closer and closer and lots of lightning and then bucketing rain and really strong winds. So 
I texted work and I said I couldn't leave yet because I really didn't want to walk to outside in case lightning hit me. Or oh, yeah, I think that's what that was what I was really most scared about that lightning would hit me. Anyway, so um, my friend at work said, "Oh, that's okay. Just see how you go." And in the meantime, my children were texting me saying, "You can't go to work, Mum. You've got to stay home. Be sensible. You can't go to work." So I didn't, I said, okay, I'll be careful, don't worry, I'm sensible. And um, after about, I think, half an hour, I could tell that the storm was passing. It had gone, the thunder sounded further away, so I, I ventured out. There was a big branch of my frangipani that had fallen near my steps where I go to the car. Uh, so I picked that up and just moved it out of the way. Uh, and there was mess everywhere, you know, broken leaves and bits of sticks and oh, it was a mess out there. Anyway, I got to my car and I just sort of kept my fingers crossed that I would get to work okay. I had to drive super carefully because there was just so much stuff on the roads everywhere. And branches that looked small when I got close up were huge. So I had to, you know, I had to drive super carefully and I didn't drive in the outside lane. In, ca in case a tree branch fell on me while I was driving. So it was a bit stressful, but I made it. I got to work okay, and everything was all right. I, ha I got there in time. I got by there by quarter to midnight, and um, so I had time to talk to everybody and hear their stories. One friend had no power at her house. Her husband was there, so she had no power. Um, Another guy was in a train coming to work and the train just stopped on the Harbour Bridge for about 10 minutes and, and didn't move after it had made a big sort of clunking, crashing sort of sound. And of course no one told them what was happening. And um, anyway, so he, he was sitting there in this metal container and I'm thinking I would have been terrified of lightning striking. Um, I don't know if it would strike a train. I mean, who knows? I, I don't know how lightning decides what it's going to hit. I know that it, it sort of goes to the tallest surrounding object, but it has, it's in a specific spot, so it just depends which direction it's actually going. Anyway, after the train got started, the, there was an announcement that said, oh, we're going now, <laughs> and it was after it was already going. So, you know, there were stories for each of us to tell, and then I just did my work, and then at six o'clock it was time to go home and the next shift was coming on and so I started to talk to one of the girls who was on the next shift and she said that what had happened to her was that the handrail from the neighbour's deck had actually been dislodged from the deck so the wind was so strong that it pulled the nails out and this big long handrail had speared into her roof and come straight into the house. Now, how scary is that? That's how strong the wind was. It was just shocking, absolutely shocking. Um, you, you'll probably see it on your news. I know it has been broadcast. It was pretty bad, and um, a man lost his life in a freak accident. I won't describe it, but it, it's just so sad. Anyway, it was bad, but, but when I got home, I still had power. The leaks hadn't opened up again, and oh, there was just mess everywhere. I spent yesterday afternoon cleaning up, actually, all the branches and everything, sweeping it off. Oh, oh. Anyway, it's back to semi-normal now. I just have to deal with the big, big branches. Well, not me personally, but my sons will. Anyway, so that's the story of last of Tuesday night. So truly, the weather around here has been just like so extreme from the fires to the floods, to this storm, which was just, oh, so scary. Anyway, I'll tell you that's the end of that story. And luckily, when I was outside yesterday doing my sweeping and stuff, guess who came back to the tree, to my beautiful flowering gum tree? The rainbow lorikeets came back. I mean, they've come back in between. I've heard them tweeting, but the weather wasn't good enough to go outside and film them. So I made a, a short video and I took lots of photographs, um, so I'll put them onto the end of this this video for you to see. The video of the birds is uh, there's two of them. They they always seem to come in pairs, which I love. There's, they're always together. Um, I don't know if it's the same two birds, but it probably isn't. But when they, when there's one, there's always two. 
anyway, it, they're hard to see in that video because um, they're very they're very brightly coloured, but they also have a lot of green on them, and that blends in with the tree. So you occasionally get to see a little bit of head bobbing, which is why I didn't film it for too long because it's hard to hard to see the birds. The photographs were a bit better because I could zoom in really close. I couldn't get too close when I was doing the video because I didn't want to scare them away. They didn't seem to bother about me, which is good, but I didn't want them to fly away. Whereas, you know, when I'm taking photographs, I can zoom in without getting actually, you know, without me having to be close to them. Anyway, I hope you enjoy seeing them, and I hope you've enjoyed this video with all my ramblings and my <laughs> crazy weather updates. I tell you, it would be nice just to have some settled weather for a little while. It's just been a nightmare for the last, well, months really. Um, oh, let me just tell you that Lottie is also um, sucking on her dummy, which you rarely see her with a dummy. I just wanted to do something different today. So she's got her dummy. Oh, did I say that? Yes, I did, didn't I? Because I wanted her to be quiet, I think I said. Anyway, maybe I just thought that. So, yes, yeah, she's got her dummy in, which is a little, I think it's a, a nook dummy. And it's got something about love written on it. And it's a gold, it's white with a gold heart. Sorry, I'm not very informed about her dummy. But anyway, all right, everybody, I'll say goodbye to you. And thank you very much for joining me and joining Lottie. It's been lovely to have you in our kitchen again. And we'll see you very soon. And in the meantime, please, everyone, just take care and be kind to each other. Bye-bye. <laughs>